Running the game Doom on some of the oddest hardware is like a modern form of art that appreciates the beauty of the current complexity of hardware that we would normally view as mundane and the tech ingenuity that transforms these boring devices into a celebration of our technological advances. Like we got Doom running on a camera, on gut bacteria, and even on a vape. You know it has evolved into a kind of culture when there's literally a subreddit dedicated to running Doom on some of the oddest hardwares. But this time, Doom is being run on something even crazier. Easier. While all previous versions of Doom have been running on deterministic machines, which means that given the same input under the same conditions, the code will always produce the same outputs. You see where I'm going with this, right? So a few weeks ago, a research was published where Doom was successfully ran in a non-deterministic way, that is within a neural network. This means that there is no code nor a game engine that's running the game, but an AI model generating the game on the fly in real time at 20 FPS without any static information and variables like game states or if statements. It's even more fascinating to see the workarounds for how some of the game states function without the static components when we dive into its AI architecture later. But why would someone make this in a non-deterministic way in the first place? There are no guarantees that the same set of outputs under the same conditions will consistently repeat. Because we can. And if we can, we do. Well, the same could be said about running Doom on a microwave, but other than for the fun of it, it proved that in AI's artificial brain, it is possible to not only simulate a world, but also be able to interact with its world. And it is that interaction aspect which has never been done before and now has been achieved even in real time. It may even improve the efficiency of game development in the future when combined with text based game generation, just like today's free AI task delegation playbook that I am going to share with you that can help you utilize the power of AI to optimize your workflow and improve your work efficiency. HubSpot has put together this free resource where you can keep track of all of the AI tools you use, monitor your own productivity, and organize your AI task assignments. It's really easy to jump right in and use. Ultimately, by organizing your AI tool usage, you can see the big picture impact of what you're doing and figure out how you can improve the flow. And personally, my favorite section is the task delegation effectiveness calculator. It shows me how well the current tasks I have delegated to AI tools have been optimized and I can easily monitor the impact of my task delegation strategies. So to start optimizing your AI workflows and save time, simply check out the link down in my description to access this free resource. And thank you HubSpot for sponsoring this video. Anyways, world simulation is really nothing new in AI like we had Nerf and 3D Gaussian splatting that can reconstruct a 3D world with just a handful of 2D images, or video generators like OpenAI Sora being able to generate a 3D scenery like it understands the physics of the real world, but to edit or to directly interact with them has always been a huge challenge that we seem to struggle to make any progress on. You could argue that we have some decent control for the AI video generators through text, but do we really get the freedom of moving the camera however we want like in Blender? So this brings us to today's research, Game Engine. It is capable of simulating Doom with the AI's model weights while being controllable in real time at 20 frames per second. However, since the AI model is non-deterministic, it is then not really a one-to-one -one replica of the original Doom, as some parts of the level will be generated inconsistently, which you will know why later, and even some of the most basic parts like death animation are just a blob of artifacts. This might also be the reason why we didn't get a playable demo as the game might actually be really broken, even though the demo looks really good. However, this is definitely a great proof of concept for an AI-based game engine, but with many people saying that this is completely revolutionary, how it will change the game industry forever and it'll only get better from here, I would say that we are still far from anything fruitful, really. And to explain my reasoning, we first need to kind of step back and clarify how AI models really generate things. I think people nowadays give the word generative AI too much credit. Take text to image AI as an example. We have become accustomed to the fact that AI is capable of generating anything we imagine through text, but we often forget how much data the text to image AI has been trained on. They're training data basically encompasses all images available on the internet, then are either tagged by AI or humans to create a text image pair for AI to learn. So at the end of the day, all the AI model is doing is compiling a dataset and to pick a line of best fit that 
corresponds best to your request. And if your request is something it wasn't trained on, well, there you go. They are going to find you a less relevant line of best fit, aka hallucinate. However, things get progressively easier to generate when you restrict the domain knowledge the AI has to learn from. So a text to image model that is focused on generating cat images would be cheaper and easier to train while being able to match the quality an all-in-one model can do. The problem with that is it'll be unable to generate anything else other than cats. So in this AI Dooms case, we are at the level of a cat text to image generator and the all-in-one one model aka a foundational model for game generations or game engines is still far from our reach. But let's actually take a closer look at how AI Doom is actually made as that would probably give you a better idea how much harder the jump from a cat model to a foundational model would be in a game engine's case. So the whole process of how game engine is made can be separated into two stages. The first is data collection, the second is generative model training. In the data collection stage, the goal is to record the human gameplay on the original Doom and more more specifically, what we want is the actions paired with the frames that are presented on the screen. Similar to text to image generation where it is trained on text and image pairs, Game Engine is trained on action input and video frame pairs instead. But since we can make thousands of people play Doom involuntarily, there isn't a good amount of data for how a player would interact with the game environment. So instead, the researchers taught some AI agents to play the game using reinforcement learning where the agents learn by receiving rewards or penalties based on their actions. But rather than focusing on completing the game, the rewards are designed to mimic human-like interactions with the game, which you can see here how much each condition rewards or penalizes. So a lot of tiny agents explore the original game and use the 32 available actions to interact with its world. Each of the frames and actions is collected into a dataset until the entire game is explored bone dry. Then in the second stage, the data are used to train a generative model, which is a modified version of the text to image model model Stable Diffusion 1.4. And instead of having the model take in text to generate image, the researchers modified the model to take in the 32 possible actions, conditioned on a previous frame, and generate the current video frame. With other modifications that injects time-related information into the model for viewing consistencies. During its training, a teacher forcing objective is applied, which means the model is always being given the correct answer every time it makes a prediction. This approach accelerates the learning for game engine, especially because it is generating content where the past actions would heavily influence the future actions. So this allows the model to correct its mistakes more quickly. However, when a model is trained using teacher forcing, where an answer is given at every step during training, it does not have this privilege during actual use. The model has to make predictions step by step without the answer, where all previous generated results would be incorporated into predicting the next frame, aka auto-regressively. So if it makes a small mistake early on, it will easily snowball into bigger errors as it keeps relying on previous incorrect steps and this would lead to bad results very quickly. So to mitigate this problem, which is called autoregressive drift, they introduced something called noise augmentation that adds noise during training that can teach the model to handle its own mistakes better with a trade-off in training efficiency. So by adding noises to individual frames, it reduces how much those errors build up when it's making predictions on its own. This method makes a huge difference, where originally without it, you would have absolute chaos in just less than three seconds, but with this technique applied, it can go on for at least three minutes just from looking at their demo. Probably even longer, but unfortunately, they didn't specify the duration that the game engine can run for. And another weird aspect about this paper is that how can this game look so good? If I recall correctly, I don't think Stable Diffusion 1.4 text-to-image generation was this good at generating images to begin with. If you're not familiar with how Stable Diffusion generate images, the model basically compresses images into smaller and simplified versions called latents to make processing faster compared to working directly on pixels. While this compression method makes mapping the relationship between different concepts easy, it can still struggle to generate small details like the numbers or icons on the screen when it is decompressed. So to further improve the viewing quality, the researchers fine-tune the part of the model that reconstructs and upscales the final image from the compressed version. This could be done extremely well as there are a lot of pre-existing high-quality Doom frames to learn from, which links back to the idea of how domain-specific knowledge like the cat generators are easier to train. So for the hands, the HUD, and the 3D environment, which might look like they are hard-coded, are actually all generated, as you can occasionally see some blobs or image artifacts. Since the domain is extremely restrictive, the quality of the video frames is comparable to JPG compression, so even if there are bad frames, the quality benchmark still gets even out to be at 29.4 PSNR. If you don't know what that means, it means it's pretty decent. Oh, did I mention how the AI model 
Elgato only has as little as 3 seconds or 60 frames of history for context. This means that there are practically no places for the AI to store game states as the context window is too short for the AI to do anything productive. Instead, the game states are inferred completely from the displayed frames aka the screen pixels we are also looking at. For instance, the AI model would infer whether the enemies have been defeated by looking at the player's health, ammo, and even player's location. So if you speedrun the game and don't pick up certain stuff, you might just break the game engine. So there are no flags or if statements, just the AI brute forcing from pixels and on-screen stats, which is kind of insane how much of the game logic is stored using only the displayed frames too. They did however test it with a longer historical context, but that did not yield any significant benefits, which is very interesting. Maybe the increase in historical context is just too small to see any actual changes and using screen pixels would save much more information. And that means more sophisticated event triggers might not work consistently. So this is cool and all, but it still ain't persistent enough to call this a game engine. I <laughs> get it. And on top of that, the research also stated their AI agents that were used to collect the data were unable to explore all the possible locations and interactions in the game, which would lead to erroneous behaviors when the player reaches certain stages. So obviously, edge cases are not covered either. And that's the last thing you would want in a game engine. Well, you could say that, what if we just add more agents to collect more data? I mean, if that doesn't scream brute force any harder, I don't know what else. Which brings us back to the point that I wanted to make at the start of the video. I'm not saying AI-based game engine is impossible, but we have to realize that AI Doom primarily replicates an existing 3D world. Nothing that feels out of the box is generated. It's very easy to tell each action is a clear line of best fit. And if we perform actions that the AI has not learned before, the game engine would obviously start to hallucinate and break. And that would be the last thing you would want in an actual game engine. On top of how much the upscaling process saved the visual quality, I think it's clear that the system heavily relies on two key components that operate as independent processes, which is usually a bad sign, especially if it's a product that needs 100% certainty. So maybe a non-deterministic game engine is not really a great idea. We would need an AI foundational model that has potentially learned from all realities, or maybe just all possible and real engine creations, which might be a bit more feasible. I mean, that future might be pretty cool as you can just use a prompt to generate a whole game with unique controls, different assets, and interesting storyline. Not to mention how much data we would need to collect, or even what kind of data we need to find to train a good game engine, as action video frame pair might not be it. So the hard code truth is, we are still a long way from getting anything practical that we can just experience a living and breathing world that is generated uniquely from scratch by an AI game engine. But the good news is, it's even more obvious now that AI is a data and compute problem, as we now learn that interactive world simulation within an AI model is completely possible thanks to AI Doom. We might just need more GPUs for that. But anyways, it is still pretty cool to be able to compress a playable game within some model weights, like it runs Doom, I guess. And if you want to keep up with the latest AI research, definitely check out my newsletter where I publish research breakdowns on many cool papers that I don't have time to make videos for. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Deegan, Miguelum, Robert Zaviasa, Owen Ingram, Lewis Muck, Tanaro, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.